Good morning. Oh, y'all are be better today. Good morning. All right. Welcome to the Boulevard Church of Christ. Sunday morning worship. Amen. Live and in color. Amen. We are thankful to our Heavenly Father for, again, another manifestation of His grace toward us because we have been able to go through the course of another week. Amen. Amen. Regardless of what that may have been uh, involved, what we may have faced, but yet uh, we have found our way here to the house of God. We should have been worshiping all week. Uh, and we come together today for corporate worship, for fellowship, uh, one with the other, uh, to encourage and edify each other from the Word of God. Amen, somebody. So good to see you. And we are thankful for your presence on this morning. And we enjoy all of these lessons because of God's love. Uh, listen, you know, uh, I know, you know, we try to dress good, y'all look good, and, and, you know, we try to do right, and sometimes we have a tendency to think that all this stuff happens to us because of us. No, 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 it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's because God loves us. Amen. And because of how God loves us, He wants us to love each other the same way. Uh, because uh, I know when we get on God's nerves sometimes, and we probably get on each other's nerves sometimes. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> but we ought to love each other in spite of it, just like God loves us. So say this, we love, we love because God first loved us. Point all your names around and say, I love you. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, amen. So don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Amen. Because of God's love, we have this wonderful avenue of prayer. Uh, and He loves us so much that He, he does not allow us uh, to walk around trying to shoulder the burdens and all the trials and tribulations of life by ourselves. He says, Come to me. All you who uh, labor and are heavy labor, uh, give me your burdens, and I give you mine. And that's what prayer is all about. And we are, we're thankful to God for that, uh, for this uh, blessed privilege of prayer, which we're able to go to His throne uh, anytime, day and night, uh, and tell Him all about all about our troubles. And so this morning is no exception. We uh, go to him on behalf of those who have made their requests known. And as always, please take down these various prayer requests in your prayer journals, uh, and in your personal prayer uh, and devotional time. Talk to God on behalf of these who have made their requests known. Uh, and we will pray until God answers. And as well, pray along with us on this morning. Being prayer for Sister Lily Reed uh, and the Reed and the Huey family, uh, her brother, uh, William Huey, passed away uh, on yesterday. So uh, let's be in prayer uh, for Sister Lily Reed and for all the family, uh, her siblings and, and uh, his family. Uh, she was kind of rough for yesterday. So let's be in prayer uh, for Sister Reed and, and the family. Continue prayers for the Savage and Kincaid family. Uh, Sister Pat Kincaid's father, uh, Mr. Richmond Savage, will be funeralized on today. So let's uh, keep the <clears throat> Savage uh, and Kincaid family lifted up in prayer. Uh, be in prayer for the brother of Brother Garland, uh, Moore. His youngest brother, Darren, uh, in Iowa, uh, is not doing it. Uh, so pray for traveling grace for Brother Moore. Uh, I believe he was in Ohio uh, over the weekend to visit uh, his aunt, that oldest aunt. And I think possibly he might be going to Iowa. Um, I'm not sure, uh, but let's be in prayer for his brother, 
Father, we know that you're able to see them through this seat. So we just ask that you help us as extended family to be a source of strength and encouragement and a leading children uh, for them uh, during this time. We pray the same for uh, the Savage and Kincaid family during the loss of the father of uh, Sister Pat Kincaid. Father, we just ask that you please bless this family and give them strength to endure. And help them, Father, to continue to fight the good fight of faith, uh, knowing that you are still the mighty good God. And Father, we come on behalf of the brother, the youngest brother, Brother Garland Moore, Darren uh, Moore, who is very ill. And Father, we just ask that you please visit him doing his time of affliction. Uh, Father, guide the doctors and the nurses and all of the medical professionals who are giving care to him that they will make the proper diagnosis and do the right things the right way at the right time that his health will be restored. And Father, we ask that you be with uh, his family from Moa as uh, he was already visiting with his aunt in Ohio and we ask Father that you bless him with travel and grace. Uh, give him strength and help uh, this entire family to continue to trust in you because you're still well able uh, because you're still on the throne. And Father we uh, we come on behalf of many among our number who are traveling, will be traveling. Father, we pray for brother and sister, uh, Paul King, uh, as they prepare to travel uh, later this week. Uh, put your arms of protection around them. Uh, all those traveling around them, that all will be safe, that they will reach their destination safely. Father, please protect them and keep them safe while they're there, uh, and then bless them to return home at their appointed time, safe and sound, and find all the way home every time. We pray the same for Brother and Sister Ford and Sister Stacy Ford, who will uh, be leaving today, going traveling back to her uh, job assignment, and then as they both will travel out of the country uh, next week, Father, please, in a special way, watch over them and keep them safe and uh, bless them to be safe in their destination and uh, please bring them back at their point in time. Uh, find it all we are. We pray for Brother Floyd Tate who is out of town on today and many others uh, who might be traveling. Please, Father, bless your traveling grace. Thank you, Father, for uh, blessing myself and Sister G uh, to make it back home safe. Uh, yesterday and Father, we uh, ask you to continue to bless us that all will continue uh, to go well. Father, for so many among our number who are still recovering from various sicknesses and illnesses, please continue to bless and restore the health of your holy divine. We thank now Sister Shirley Williams, Sister Shirley McGee, Sister Marlene Grayson, uh, brother and sister love and many others among our number who are dealing with recent health challenges and uh, some that are not so recent, please, oh God, uh, continue to bless. Father, we, we ask that you bless this nation. We need you. Every day and every hour, we need you. And Father, we just ask that you please change the hearts of me and to look to you not rely on our own intuition and wisdom uh, to see us through the many challenges in this world. For the war in Ukraine, Father, please uh, bring about peace and change the hearts of those who seek to do such evil that they will turn away from taking the lives of innocent men, women, and children uh, and turn to you. Father, we just ask that you be with this congregation as a whole. We thank you, Father, for being so good to us. We are a blessed people. 
And we thank you, Father, for blessing this Boulevard Church in a powerful way. And we just ask your continued blessings for all those who are dealing with life challenges, our city saints. Bless their spirits, give them strength, and Father, help them to continue to hold on to your unchanging hands. Now, God, as we prepare for the preaching, as we prepare to worship you this morning, assist us uh, in removing all uh, thoughts that are foreign and the distractions that might hinder us. And help us, Father, to give you the worship that you deserve and desire, and that is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified, may the devil be horrified, but most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. It's in the name of one who died on Calvary, uh, now sits at the right hand of the Father to live forevermore. In Jesus' name, let us together say. God has He smiled on me He has set me free And God has smiled on me He's been good to me Scripture reading will be taken from Psalm chapter 25, 
verses 1 through 5. Psalms chapter 25, verses 1 through 5. Reading the hearing goes. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yeah, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. I read you Psalms. Psalms chapter 25, verses 1 through 5. Let us pray together. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We magnify your name and we just lift you up. Lord, we thank you so much for all of your bountiful blessings that you have so richly showered upon us. Lord, we thank you for watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. And then you shook us early this morning and you awakened us to a brand new day. Lord, we thank you that we woke up in our right minds this morning, Lord. We knew, we knew who we were, we knew where we were, and we knew whose we were. And we thank you so much for that. Lord, we thank you for all of your loving kindness and your, your tender mercies. Lord, we come now at, at this hour asking that you would just bless us throughout this day. Lord, uh, strengthen us and encourage us in, in every way. And we will always be mindful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory. Lord, we come now asking uh, you to bless those that are uh, in the nursing homes and the hospitals. Lord, we ask you to bless those senior saints, Lord, that, uh, that they would continue to be encouraged and continue to look to you for their strength and for their help. Lord, keep your arms of protection uh, around uh, the entirety of this Boulevard family, Lord. Bless those that uh, that are bereaved, those that have recently lost loved ones, Lord, encourage them, let them know that, uh, that there is no error, uh, Lord, that you would sustain them in whatever situation they find themselves in. Lord, we ask for traveling grace for those that are traveling, Lord, uh, give them uh, the assurance uh, that you're there, you're there when they get there, Lord. Bring them back home safely uh, at their point in time. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless uh, the leadership of, of, of this flock, Lord. Uh, continue to encourage them as they uh, continue to attempt to encourage us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we, we want to have a love one for each other. That uh, matches the love that you have for us, uh, Lord. We we pray your blessings upon those that are in war, Lord. Those that are inflicting uh, harm, uh, death uh, to those that are lesser in physical strength and lesser in military might, Lord. But we know that that you are still a God that is in control. Lord, we just ask that you would, would be merciful on those that are afflicted, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless us now as we continue in this worship service, Lord. Uh, remove every hindrance that uh, would prohibit us from worshiping you truly in spirit and in truth, Lord. And, and just bless us that, uh, that the preacher would stir up uh, and encourage our hearts and our spirits. Uh, 
to continue to, to fight a good fight of faith. Lord, as always, we pray that you forgive us of all of our sins and save us in the end is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray we give thanks always. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy by on the everlasting arm. And what a blessing it is, what a peace is my day on the everlasting arm. You know that we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, saying that to get
uh, at this point we're glad to have you on this morning to all of our brothers we are always thankful uh, to those who lead us in worship each and every week uh, and the way in which you lead us uh, we thank you so much uh, brother Ford for those uh, songs of Zion scripture reading by brother uh, Derek and then uh, fervent prayer by brother Murdoch to other brothers who will come uh, with the remainder of the service we thank you as well Psalms Psalms 25 Psalms 25 we will begin verse 1 through verse 5 uh, kind of going through that season in the life of the Boulevard family I think we need a little encouragement this morning. Uh, and so uh, I want to get this thought from David Psalms 25 verse 1 beginning unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul O my God I trust in thee let me not be ashamed let me or rather let not my enemies triumph over me yea let none that wait on me be ashamed let them be ashamed which transgress without cause show me thy way O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee mm, do I wait all the day. The last part of it that verse, verse 5. On thee do I wait all day. Yeah. For a few minutes. Heaven can heal hearts that are filled with hurt. Heaven can heal hearts. You might struggle trying to find a solution anyway else. But heaven can heal hearts that are filled with her. Someone once said that there are no crown wearers in heaven. There were not cross bearers here below. God never promised that you ain't gonna have to deal with some stuff on this side. But he did promise he wouldn't ever leave. So, so, so don't get it twisted. Simply because we are children of God. God never made a promise to those of us. In fact, he said, yea, and all who would live godly shall Suffer. What that says to me, this quote, is that in this life you're gonna go through some stuff. Yeah. Problems that you thought would never uh, that you would never have to encounter have seemingly become permanent. Pain that you have never experienced both physically and emotionally seem to now be persistent. Mm -hmm. Feelings of hurt seem to just hang around in him. Despair and dilemma puts a damper on your daily activities. And you begin to feel broken and battered and while the spirit might be willing to get to a point where your body just this time. Yeah. Yeah. You start playing consolation in family and friends and your work in extracurricular activities, but yet there is no ease. 
What David shares with us from this text today is that when life has taken its toll, when sorrow and sadness uh, have set up camp, when heaviness of burdens seem to hold you back, uh, is it going to make You need to understand that heaven can heal hearts that are filled with her. There are three things he says to us, I believe, from this text this morning. I want to I wanna share with you and, and we'll let, let you go. Uh, if we're going to get the healing from heaven uh, to heal hearts that are filled with hurt, uh, there first must be a desire for God. We'll see this in verse 4. Then there has to be a dependence on God in verses 2 through 3. And then uh, there is a realized duty to God uh, as we look at verses 4 and 5 as we talk from this uh, thought this morning. Heaven can heal hearts that are filled with her. It is believed that during the time of the writing of this particular psalm, David was in a state of trouble, uh, despair, and depression. It is said that in the 22nd psalm, David is lying all alone, flat on his face. In Psalms 23, he is standing through God's favor in spite of his foes. In Psalms 24, he is sitting, describing the character of the man who shall descend into the holy hill. And in Psalms 25, he is kneeling with voice and hands, lifted up to God, beseeching his mercy. And he says in verse 1, unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? It, it presupposes that if he is petitioning the Lord in prayer to lift up his soul, that the former state was dejection. It is one thing to be troubled, but, but it's something altogether different uh, when, when the soul has been pressed down with sin and the cares of this world to the degree that the only thing that you can do is cry out to God to lift you up. Heaven is going to heal your heart that is filled with hurt. That must be, that has to be a desire for God. David had a desire for God. He said, oh Lord, do I lift up my soul unto thee. He was so down, he was so depressed. The only help that he knew that would make a difference was help. Psalm 1 the verses are one and two. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Psalms 38, the verses nine. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not here from the Psalms 143, the verses 6, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. I believe I heard that in the prayer this morning. Why do I stretch my hands to thee? No other help my, I know my soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land. So like Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is 
and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The heavenly healing of a hurting heart is, is to take place. There must be a desire for God, not, not for the wisdom of this world, but a desire for God. If, if destruction is to be deterred, there must be a desire for God. If, if you want to deal with your despondency, there must be a desire for God. If, if discouragement is to be diminished, a diminished brother, there must be a desire for God. If heaven is going to heal your heart, that's full of hurt. God has to lift your soul because. You got a desire for it. But then, look, look secondly at the fact that not only must there be a desire for God, but there has to be a dependence on God. You can, you can desire it all you want to, but you got to somewhere along the line realize that you got to depend on it. Yes, 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 yes. He says in verse 2, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Underline it. He says, let me not be ashamed. Let me, uh, let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea. Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without all. Fervent prayer is no good without a solid faith. See, it's, it's faith. Uh, that, that, that causes us, that gives us the confidence that prayer will work. See, yeah, we, we ought to be fervent in prayer, but, but we got to have faith if, if the prayer is going to work. They trusted in God because he had faith in God. And when, when there is trust and faith in, there can be a dependence Oh, see, uh, if, if, if there's somebody in your life <clears throat> that you have faith in, you trust them, yeah. and you're going to depend on them. See, if, if there's somebody in your life that you got faith in, if, if they tell you, I'm going to do something, if they tell you, I got your back, if they tell you, I'm going to, you trust them. And you can depend on it because they have proven themselves, <laughs> yeah, to be true time and time again. Now, if, if there's somebody that you know, every time they tell you, well, I'm gonna be there, and they don't ever show up, why do you keep trusting in them? Why do you keep depending on somebody that you know you can't count on? Never you put your trust in You can count on it. But then in part B of verse 2, he, he makes an interesting statement. He says, Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Here, here's what he says. He says, do not allow my confidence in you to be shaken or disappointed of what I depend on you for. Lord, I've been bragging to my friends. you 
good father. You always come through for me. And God, I'm saying to you, don't let me be ashamed. I put all my time. Don't let me down. I ain't bragging on you. I ain't telling you how good you are. Don't let me down. Now. Don't, don't let me be ashamed. Don't let me uh, walk away with it on my face. See, you've been trusting in your God. You've been talking to him about all your problems and nothing with this. He let you down. He said, no, 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 God, look. Man, look, you, you've proven yourself to be true. Don't let me down. Now, it's not a fact. He goes on. He goes so far as to say, uh, and his initial prayer was restricted to himself. But then in verse 3 of the text, he expanded uh, his request. He expanded his request to include everybody. He said, let none that wait on me be ashamed. Everybody at the boulevard, God put it all on Don't leave them hanging. You've been good to us in the past. Don't leave us out there now. He says, don't let me be ashamed. Don't, don't let anybody be ashamed who trust in you and who call on you to be ashamed. It is of a surety that those who are in communion with God and who through a believing hope wait for him shall not be made ashamed. Psalms 31, the verse of Lord and be, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Romans 10, the verses 11, for the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Proverbs 3, the verses of 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path don't lean on don't support yourself don't prop yourself up with your own intuition and, 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 and wisdom and instinct uh, but trust in the Lord he won't let you do the same if a hurting heart is going to be healed has to be a dependence on God. Just as one uh, who is addicted to drugs and alcohol has developed a chemical dependence on that drug, uh, you have to develop a spiritual dependence on God. When you get up, when you go to sleep, when you go by the way, uh, you ought to be hooked on God. When there is dependence on God, even in your difficult and dark day, God can heal a hurting heart. Now let me let me let me try to blow with this. He says, finally, there is a realized duty to God. He says, show me that way. Verse 4. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, and on thee do I wait all day. When there is a desire for God, it will lead to a dependence on God, which then should steer you into waiting. Uh, a brother wanting to know what your duty to God is. And so it has been said in this text that there are three classes in the school of grace uh, that you need to be enrolled in. He says, show me thy way. Those ways in which I cannot err. Teach me thy path. That narrow path, which is too commonly unknown, that leads uh, to eternal life. Lead me in thy truth. Uh, 
and teach me so that I may not be deceived, so that I may not only know thy will, but do it. And because you are my salvation, I'm going to wait on you the whole day, every day. Psalms 5, the verse say, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Psalms 86, 11, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. If giving is to take place in a heart that is hurting, we must be diligent in our duty to God. God wants us to depend on Him. He wants us to have a desire for Him. But make no mistake. God wants us to understand that we have a duty to want Him. There is something from us that needs to go back to God for what all, for all the things that he continues to do on our behalf. And when we do that, we'll be that good for all of the hurt that we do. The question was asked of a lifeguard in Newport, Rhode Island. How can you tell when anyone is in need of help when there are thousands of bathers on the beach and in the water making a perfect hubbub of noises? To which he answered, no matter how great the noise and confusion, there has never been a single time when I could not distinguish the cry of distress above them all. I can always tell you. And that's exactly like God. In the midst of the babble and confusion of life, he never fails to hear the soul that cries out to him for help and the breakers and storms of life as David cried out, he heard it. And so this morning in the midst of your hurt and storms of life, sincerely and earnestly cry out to God. He'll hear you. When your burdens seem impossible to bear, cry out to God. He will hear you. When joy seems uh, to have forgotten you, your address, cry out to God. He'll hear you. If your heart is hurting and you need healing, tell God all about your troubles. He'll make it all right with you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Heaven can heal hearts that are full of it. You, you may have you may have tried every everything you may have trusted in, in human wisdom uh, you, you've been listening to the to the self-help advocates and, and read all kinds of books on and I mean, listen that's all right and, and, and I'm not knocking you know self-improvement uh, activities and books all oh, that's good but listen if you want to get some real help to break you out of stuff. You got to call on God. You got to cry out to God. You got to talk to somebody who has a proven track record of handling problems that ain't nobody else. There ain't nothing too hard for God. Like the when you're going through He said, to be your Lord. Nobody else. To be your Lord. I, I'm down in the valley. My soul is so trodden down. The only thing I can do is, is call.
call on you to make it. The deal. I lift up my son. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You write that. You, you, you write that. You, you, your, your soul uh, has been, you feel that your soul has been so detected. You're so low. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever uh, you're going through, the, the despondency has, has overtaken your spirit. Your spirit uh, has, has, uh, has, has stimulated and drained. The only thing you can do is look up. Yeah. And that's all right. Because as long as you can look up, <laughs> you can give. You don't look at the heaven. You still got a good shot. Because only heaven can heal a heart. Can heal a heart. That's full of it. So I'm talking to somebody this morning. You right there. You right there. Your heart. Your heart is filled with all kinds of hurt. Been dealing with family for been dealing with stuff on your job. Yes. Young folk, you, you, you just get back in school and, and you already dealing with stuff. Teachers are dealing with stuff. Amen. Uh, your heart is full of hurt. Many of us have lost family members yes. recently yes. and not so re recently. And, and, and it's still a struggle to try to get through it. it because your heart is still so full of hurt. We're dealing with all kinds of situations in our relationships and, and marriages and, and interpersonal relationships. And uh, you, your heart, is, some, some of our children have, have, have just broken our heart. Your heart is full of hurt. Maybe I'm talking to some children whose parents have broken their heart. Come on, baby. Ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you in the midst of what you're going through to cry out to him like me and to have that assurance of knowing that heaven can heal hearts that they're full of hurt. You ought to come. You ought to come and get the help that you need to do. Don't, don't leave here with your heart still hurt. Don't leave here. Your heart still might needs to be healed, but you can leave today knowing that you are on your way to recovery because you trust in heaven. Come on. Talk to somebody that you not said yes to Jesus. You you not obey the glorious gospel uh, of, of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came into this world to die for my sins and, and, and for yours. He, he hung out there on the not having committed any sin in his life, but yet he died for us. And maybe I'm talking to somebody today. You, your heart hurting because you're struggling trying to find your way religious and you 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 been dealing with various kinds of denominational organizations and and, and you've not found uh, you've not found rather anything that, that can heal your heart spiritually if you're here today you're not here by any coincidence God wanted you to be here to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ, his son, that can heal your heart that's hurting religiously. He wants you to be saved. You do that today. By hearing the gospel. Believing that same gospel. Repenting, turning from the ways of the world, from your way of understanding to God. Confessing Christ to be the son of God. Be buried in the water grave of baptism for all the remission of the sins. Get up out of that water, brand new creature, brand new creation. 
Be faithful unto death, and God will give you a crown. It won't fade away. And you can leave here today. You may have come with a heart uh, that was hurting religiously, a heart that was broken because all the things that you have trusted in, uh, from a religious standpoint, you have found that they are not true, and you've been let down, your heart has been broken. Leave here today healed religious. Say yes to Jesus. God will heal your heart that has been broken, a heart that is hurt. Somebody ought to say yes to that. You ought to respond. If you need prayer, remain standing where you are. If you have physical limitations, you raise your hand, we'll see you. But if you need prayer, just remain standing where you are. If you need special prayer, come down one of these aisles uh, and make your request known to these brothers. Say yes to me if your heart is hurting because heaven can heal a heart that's full of hurt. Won't you come as we begin to stand and sing? So, say yes. Come on. Oh, to Jesus, I say yes. Say yes to Him. Won't you come? Come on. Say yes.
the things that they're going through, the struggles they're having, we know that you already understand. We just pray as they continue to lean on you for guidance and for love and for compassion and for delivering them from whatever trials and tribulations are going through. Father, we already know that you're going to bless their lives. Father, we know that as we have went through so much, you have always brought us out of our hurt and our harm. You have given us joy, Father, even in these difficult times. You have shown us how we can live better, how we can strive to have a greater understanding, how your word always helps us to find peace in troubling times. We just pray, God, and God, that you will continue to bless all those who are standing and asking for prayers in the side of Christ. Father, for those who have publicly asked for prayer, Sister Xavier Reed, uh, for a friend who's facing some difficult life changes. Father, we know that all of us are going to face some difficult changes in our lives, and different times where we don't really know what's going to happen. But we know that you are the world. We just ask you to shine the light of understanding and patience on this person's life. Help us to help her to be guided by knowledge and understanding of your will. Help her to have a closer relationship with you so that she can have a greater understanding and purpose for her life. For Sister Lee, Father, we just ask that you continue to bless and guide her and for our daughter to have a very prosperous and successful year. Be with her while she's away that no harm or danger will fall upon her. Help her as she strives to gain knowledge in her curriculum that you will open her heart and her mind and bless her with all the circumstances and knowledge and wisdom that she needs to acquire the degree that she's after. And for her sister, for her sister uh, Tally, Brother Tally, who's traveling uh, this weekend, Father, we just ask you to grant them safe passage there and back home safely. Help them and have a drama time as the son of Brother Tally's birthday. Continue to bless and strengthen them, Father, as a couple and as a husband and wife. Uh, their love may continue to grow stronger. For each of us, Father, who may have conditions in our lives, who may not have stood this morning, we just ask you to look into our lives. Look at our conditions, Father. Help us to know that there is an answer to our hurt. There is always knowledge and wisdom that will guide us and will help us to be sustained in your will and your purpose in our lives. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins and strengthen us. For Lord, we ask you to bless our lives that each day that we travel in this world and we strive to be more like Christ. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and give you thanks all of us. Amen. What a my Savior, come to earth, earth, and to love. Why did he choose the holy earth, earth, because he Plan. And his plan was to be shown with love 
and sending his son for to die and pay a debt for us that we weren't able to pay for ourselves. Jesus Christ was born of Virgin Mary and in Matthew 26 when they were coming close to the time for him to fulfill that plan. He met with his disciples in Matthew 26 and said, as they was eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and break it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this my body. He also took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament was shared for men and for the remission of sin. He said, but I say unto you, I will not drink any for or this fruit of the vine. Till that day I drank it new with you in my father's kingdom. We are part of that kingdom today. And Jesus, as he has always promised, is well for us and today as we take this bread and this cup. The disciples remember that in Acts 20 and verse 7. See, upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, read part of the Bible, and continued his speech until midnight. They were encouraged by that great love and sacrifice that Jesus gave and shown. And they was always able to move forward in courage and in hope. And, and this is encouraging for us today. Because we have a God that loves us and He will always be there for us. When the worst happens, He's there. Hebrews 13 8, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Oh, wise eternal mercy, Father, Father, we come before you always giving you thanks. We thank you, Father, for all your many blessings. We thank you for the great love that you have for us. The great love that you have shown in giving your son. We pray at this time, Father, as we Take this bread that represents your son, body, this cup that represents his shed blood. That he so taken it, taken in remembrance of him, clean hands and pure hearts. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we worship today with our gift, Solomon said in Proverbs 11, 25, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that water it shall himself also be watered. In other words, Solomon said that When we are given with our time, talent, and especially our treasure, uh, liberality, lessons, uh, will come back to us. Uh, when we water, we don't ever have to go thirsty. Amen, somebody. And so let's be mindful of that today uh, as we give back to God, as we have prospered. God is mighty good to us. Yes. Let the lesson of life to that as we give today. Boulevard, we will continue to commend you uh, for your giving efforts. Uh, let's continue to uh, give uh, and be the faithful stewards that God has called all of us to be uh, 
in this place. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are truly thankful for, uh, again, this blessed privilege that we have to uh, worship you uh, with our gifts. Father, help us uh, to be liberal, uh, knowing that uh, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and when we water, we shall also be water. Thank you, Father, for being so mighty good to us. And for all of your blessings from our earliest existence to this present moment. And Father, help us to give back to you uh, as we have prospered, uh, realizing that uh, we can never give you enough to repay you for all the things that you have done and that you are doing in all of our lives. And Father, we pray that the receiving of these funds be used with wisdom, prudence, and guidance as we seek to extend and enhance the borders of your kingdom uh, in this white Haven community, in this city of Memphis, and more in the world as our prayer and our desires. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Here to give good morning announcements. Our annual back to school prayer service will be held on Wednesday, August the 31st at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The Art of Soul Winning and Evangelism Training Symposium, hosted by the Knowledge Road and Southeast Side Congregation, continues. Please pick up a flyer from the visitor's desk for dates and time. The flyer is also posted on the bulletin board. We also want to send out condolences to Sister Pat Kincaid in the loss of her father, Richmond Savage. Services are being held today at 1 p.m. at Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church, located at 3167 Knight Road. We also want to send condolences to Sister Linda Reed and the loss of her brother William Hewitt on um, yesterday. Services and arrangements are incomplete at this time. We also want to take this time to recognize those who are celebrating birthdays and also anniversaries this week. If you're so inclined, you can stand at this time to recognize for your birthday or anniversary. Let's give a hand. Also, to be informed of any other events that come up, you can also check the church website. At this time, I'll turn it back over to Brother Jackson. The church said, Man, I trust that you have been encouraged from the Word of God on today, and that it has truly uh, enriched uh, your life. To all of our guests and friends, it, it, it has been our great delight to have had you visiting with us. Uh, you have honored us with your presence. Uh, we don't take that for granted because there are many other places that you could have gone. Uh, but you chose to worship with the Boulevard family and we are very thankful for that because after all, the Boulevard is a place of belonging. It leads to a place of blessing. Somebody, Amen. If you're here uh, and you are worshiping with us in person, to those who worship with us virtually, we thank you, and uh, we look forward uh, to seeing you in person at the time of your choosing, so we might fellowship with you. Uh, but if there are those who are worshiping with us in person today, and you'd like to stand and let us know who you are and where you are from, we certainly want to give you that privilege. Are there those to my right? You, you're worshiping with us today. You're visiting. To my right, you're visiting. All right. To my left, you're visiting with us today. All right. We all family. All right. We got to get busy. Like right, some business. Amen. But I'm glad to see y'all too. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, 
Again to all of our visitors, thank you so much. Uh, and please come back and be with us again. <clears throat> Let me just, uh, we have been having our age specific meetings and uh, we still have our youth, uh, our teenagers. And so uh, young people uh, don't think that uh, we forgot you. Uh, that there was uh, some intentionality for the time uh, with the meeting uh, for your group. So uh, within in the coming weeks, be listening for an announcement uh, for uh, the age specific group uh, for our teenagers. I believe this age group uh, will go from uh, 12 to uh, 18, I believe, or 12 to 20 because those uh, 21 and above have already uh, had their meeting. So we want to make sure that we include our teenagers. So be listening for your meeting uh, to be announced uh, in the coming weeks. And then let's, those of us who can encourage uh, Brother and Sister Kincaid on today, uh, if you can, I know they will be encouraged. Uh, by your presence at the services for her father, Sister Kincaid's father. Uh, so if you can, if you can find it in your schedule, uh, let's encourage them all today. Certainly want to continue to be in prayer with them, amen. If I can leave it, God can achieve it. So help me to So to those who look. Give God some praise and give prayer to stand in the future. I'm going through, you know that I'm going through. I don't know what the world may decide to do. You know that I made up my mind. And I ain't gonna turn around. And I started with Jesus. And I'm going through, yes, I'm going through. You know that. Today, you bless us, allow us to rise to see yet another day. You bless us with the right frame of mind and the spirit to come out and to worship you on this morning. We're prayerful and thankful for that. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done. We thank you for your manservant and the message on this morning. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the things that are said, that those things have pricked our hearts, and that we may continue to study your word and work to grow closer towards you doing your will, your way. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, the Kincaid family and Sanders family at this time, and the loss of Sister Pat's brother. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, Sister the Reed family and Sister Lily Reed and the loss at this time of the loss of her brother. Others, Heavenly Father, that we know are bereaved. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you may comfort them. But I want to add, Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless each and every last one of us with the comforting spirit, that we may reach out and provide comfort and encouragement one to another. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are sick, those who are recovering. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are going through various things, maybe even pending chest results. We pray, Heavenly Father, that those tough results come back favorable. We pray, Heavenly Father, for others that's in the congregation that are sick. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the world as a whole. We pray for those that are traveling. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless them. Regardless of how they may be traveling, bless those that may be um, that may be driving, those whatever it may be, Heavenly Father. We ask that you just bless them that they may be able to arrive at their destination safe and return back. We pray, Heavenly Father, as we depart from here today, that we always continue to keep you on the forefront of our mind, and that we may continue to encourage one another as we try to live our way in the way that pleases you. These are another blessings that we ask in Christ's name. Amen.